I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and I'm always asking you guys, what do you want to see more of? And you wanted to see a really hard quilt. So I thought about what is the hardest quilt that I could tackle? And we came up with the Spruce Star Free Quilt Pattern, and it uses three different sizes of half square triangles. You guys know I love half square triangles, so let me show you how to make this wonderful quilt. Your first step is to visit fatquartershop.com and search Spruce Star and download this free pattern. It comes in four sizes, table runner, lap, twin, and queen. And when you go to page two, all your fabric requirements are here and we made this fat quarter friendly. So depending on what size quilt, that determines the number of fat quarters. And you will use the same number of backgrounds as prints for your fat quarters because each block uses two prints. We're using sashing, print that's gray, a binding that's black, and here is our backing. And we are using the Silhouettes Collection by Holly Taylor from Moda Fabrics, and all of your cutting is right here. Now the most important thing is your triangle paper. You're going to use three and three quarter inches finished, two and a half inch finished, and one and a quarter inch finished. Now we wrote this pattern to where you could cut this and make this the traditional way. But today I'm gonna to show you how to use triangle paper because when you start doing things advanced and have this many triangles in a block, you really have to have some type of triangle paper. So you can either make it the way we wrote it or I can show you my tips today. So our first step is to pick the fat quarters you're gonna use. And like I said, every block uses one background and one print. So today I'm gonna to use this as my print and this is my background and set these aside. What you're gonna do is take both of these fabrics and put them right sides together because we are going to cut our triangle paper and make it fit on top of this fabric. So I'm gonna put these right sides together and I'm going to go press this to get all of the creases out. So now I have all the wrinkles out. I've got my fabrics right sides together. I'm gonna let this stay on my ironing table while I get my triangles on a roll ready to go. So today we're gonna be making the lap size. And so the lap size is your second column. And if you read, you can see exactly what you need to cut if you are doing the traditional method. But I'm gonna look at these little cheat notes. The triangle means that we need from the three and a three quarter, two squares. And you can see there's a little triangle and it tells you three and three quarter inches finished, which is what I have right here. I need two squares. So I'm just gonna unroll and cut two squares off. It's important to cut right on the line. So that's my first cut. My second cut is a diamond shape. And the diamond shape is for two and a half inches finished and we need 10 squares. So I'll cut there, but this is kind of big. So I'm gonna divide this up into two sections, a six square section and a four square section just to make it easier and to be more accurate. So I've got that cut. My third one is like a little teepee and I need 14 of those and those are one and a quarter inches finished. So I need 14. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut 16 just because to me that's easier. And then on this side, I'm gonna cut a clean edge because it looks like we started with a piece that was at the beginning of the roll. So now I have all these papers. And what I need to do is fit those on the fat quarter. And you can see how the diagram is written for the traditional piecing, but I'm gonna show you how I make it work with triangle paper. So I'm gonna bring my fabrics from the ironing table and I've got them right sides together. And this is your salvage. It's got the little dots. You wanna make sure your paper does not cover that. And basically, I'm gonna do this like a puzzle piece. And you have plenty of room. So what I'll do is turn this I just wanna make sure I cover all the edges. So I'm gonna cut a little section here, and you can tell I have plenty of room, so I'm not too worried about waste because I have a bunch of fabric. So here, I've got this. I'm gonna turn this over 
just because my black is smaller and just make sure that it covers both sides. And I'm just gonna put some pins where the dotted lines are not because you don't wanna have to move those when you're sewing. And really what you wanna do is make sure all four corners are nice and pinned down and flat. If it is not flat, your triangles might come out wavy and you definitely don't want that when each of these blocks has so many half square triangles. And so when you're looking at this, on the front should be flat and on the back should be flat. Then I'll cut this piece. You don't have to pin if you don't want to. It's just a matter of when you're sewing, keeping everything nice and flat. And you can see that it's a lot less cutting than following the instructions and cutting all of those squares out. Here you just cut paper and then you're just gonna stitch on the line. This will just be left over so it can go in your scrap bucket. And I like to leave about half an inch to an inch all the way around. It kind of depends how much fabric you have. Since I have so much fabric on this one, I have given myself more of a margin than I normally would. So I've given myself about an inch all the way around. It kind of depends on how much fabric you have. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this to your sewing machine and you're gonna sew all of these together. So I'm gonna show that to you. Now with this, fabric. You want to pick a thread that is probably gray. White might show up on the black and gray is just a nice neutral to blend in. So I would use color 2600 from Arafil. And you can see we stitched with red thread so you could see. That means you're going to stitch on all of the dotted lines. And so you're going to do that with all of the pieces. This will turn into this. These two will turn into this. And this one will turn into this. Now what I want you to note is see how flat this is once it's sewn. So you want your stitch length to be super small because when you tear your paper off, you want it to come off nice and easy. Now to pull your paper off, the first thing you need to do is, and you're gonna do this on all of your papers. I'm just gonna show you on this one. You cut on the solid lines, and I'm gonna show you this one because it's the biggest and it's the easiest for you to see. It's really important that you cut right on that line, exactly. So we've got that, now we're gonna cut on this line. So when you're stitching, you wanna make sure that, of course, use a gray thread, not red, stitch directly on that line with a super small stitch length, whatever your normal stitch length is, go down a little bit. Then you're gonna cut directly on these solid lines. Cut as accurate as you can. And I do use the same rotary cutter when I'm using paper as if I do when I'm using fabric. I don't change rotary cutters. And then from here, making sure you don't move the paper, you just cut right on those lines. And the outside lines and these lines that are straight need to be 100% straight. When you're cutting on this diagonal, this is your seam allowance, so it does not have to be perfect. So I always cut these last. And then what you do is take your triangles, fold them back on a crease, and pull. That paper's gonna come right off. If the paper's not coming off, that means your stitch length is too long. So from here, you're gonna take all of your half square triangles and press. I'm gonna set my seam, press to one side. Now from here, I'm gonna cut the little dog ears off. Then I'm gonna finger press the back open and then use the iron to press that open. So no matter what size quilt you're making, for each block, you need 28 small half square triangles, 20 medium half square triangles, and four large half square triangles. And that is the order of the instructions, the way that they're written right here. So once you've done this, you have the first part of page three done, and now we can move to assembling the block. Our first unit is called the seedling star unit. You're gonna take seven of the small half square triangles and one of the large half square triangles. You're gonna put three together by pinning. You're gonna stitch a quarter inch seam and press open. You're gonna do the same thing on the top with four half square triangles. The most important thing here is to pay attention to how your half square triangles are laid out and to pin 
before you do that quarter inch seam. And then you're gonna put this together, and again, you're going to pin. You'll just pin once at the top, once at the bottom, making sure you have a very accurate quarter inch seam. Once this is sewn together, you will add this, and you will have this unit. It's called the seedling star unit, and you're gonna have four for each block, and your back will look like this if you've pressed open. Really with a block with this many seams, the only way to make it not puffy is to press open. Then we're gonna move to adding our medium half square triangles. And you're gonna put two on the left side and three on the top, paying attention to the direction. And you can see this one is reversed. So you can see just the direction. Just pay attention to the pattern. You're gonna pin that sew and press and then add the top just like you did on the other. And once you've done that, you're gonna have the sapling star unit. This should measure eight inches by eight inches before it goes in the block and each block has four and just make sure you're pinning like crazy. Okay, so then you're gonna connect the four units. This one right here is your large half square triangle and it is going to create a diamond in the center and you're just gonna pin those together, matching all your seams, sew, press, and then add this last seam. And I'll show you how the block looks. It's going to be 15 and a half inches unfinished, so it's a nice big block. So if you've pressed open on the back, you can see how nice and flat it is on the back and the front. Now, if you didn't press open right here where all these intersections are, it would be bumpy and it would kinda just be bumpy. And when you put your hand across it, it would go like this. So pressing open is gonna give you the exact look you need here. And your block is gonna be 15 and a half inches unfinished and 15 inches finished. So here is the quilt all quilted in the lap design. And it's a setting of three blocks by three blocks. And we use the same fabric on our cornerstones as our binding. And this is how the block looks when it's set in there. We quilted this with a Moulin Rouge design, which is swirly feathers, and we used a light gray. And it looks great because it's not too bright. This is a light gray. You can hardly see it on the screen, and it looks good on the back also. Now, sometimes people will quilt something like this with a really strong black thread, and that might be just a little too much. So I would go with a gray, medium, to light thread when you're long arming this. Since this block only uses two fabrics, I really wanted to show you what this would look like in other designers' fabrics. And like I said, this is Holly Taylor fabric, but I wanted to show you it in other designers' fabrics just so you can see what it looks like. So this first one is in Camille Ross Kelly fabric by Moda Fabrics. This block is by Joanna Figueroa of Fig Tree Fabrics for Moda Fabrics. This fabric is Lori Holt fabric by Riley Blake Designs. And for all you batik lovers, we threw in a batik. So you asked and we delivered a really hard quilt. It's called the Spruce Star. Now, if you are maybe intermediate and you wanna move to advance and you wanna move to a quilt like this, what I would suggest is make one block. See what you think before you commit and buy a ton of fabric, invest a ton of money into something and then it's not doable. So just make one block, see how it goes, comment and let me know what you think of this block and I'll see you next time.